So after our messy introduction here, let's define now the bilinear transform. So remember what the bilinear transform should be doing is, so these are our analog frequencies. And they are ranging from zero to infinity. And so now we've got our limited range of digital frequencies which are running from zero to pi. So these are our digital frequencies. And so what we would like to have is a mapping, which is mapping infinity to pi, and then all the intermediate values nicely distributed into this region here. So we'd like to have a mapping in this way. And um, the way how this is done is very, very easy. So if we have a function h of s, so our analog transfer function, then what we do is we just say that s is 2 divided by t, our sampling interval z minus 1 divided by z plus 1. So that's a sampling interval. So very often people substitute directly t and then just having negative powers here. So 1 minus z2 minus 1 and then 1 plus z2 minus 1 instead. So again, that's the sampling interval. And so we're just substituting this s here into our h of s. And then obviously with this we are getting an h of z. And um, with this we have um, transformed this with our bilinear transform already. Pretty straightforward. Does a bilinear transform really perform this mapping of the frequencies? Yeah, so bilinear, bilinear transform So frequency mapping So remember, so in the analog domain frequencies are represented as S and then J capital Omega. So these are our analog frequencies. And in the sample domain, we know that is E to J Omega. So these are our digital frequencies. Digital frequencies between 0 and pi, and the analog frequencies running from 0 to infinity. So does it really, is it really the case? And um, it's very simple to see. So we, so we just write out our function with that. So we have, remember our Z transform is 2 divided by T and then Z minus 1 divided by Z plus 1. So if we're substituting our S in here and our Z in here, so then we're getting out here j capital omega equals 2 divided by t and then we've got here e2 j omega minus 1 divided by e2 j omega plus 1. So now this here, this term here is nothing else than 
tangens omega half. And so, so we can j j tangens omega half. And so this gives us gives us here two divided by t, and then j tangens omega omega half. And then obviously our j cancels out here. So therefore our final formula then is if you capital omega equals two divided by t and then tangents omega half. So that's our mapping for the bilinear transform. And this equation we actually need later on for for the pre-warping of frequencies. So therefore it's a pretty important equation. So let's redraw this here on the next sheet of paper that we have it. So the frequency mapping from from digital to from digital to analog this is omega equals 2 divided by t and then tangens omega divided by 2 so these are our digital frequencies here and these are our analog frequencies. So how does it how does it look like? So we can obviously easily make a make a plot out of this. Now we know that the that the tangents is going to infinity at pi half, half pi, and so therefore because of this the tangents goes to infinity at pi and it goes also to minus infinity at minus pi. So this means that in the middle here we have a linear relationship here and then and then this goes goes straight up here when this is when this is approaching pi and then there's the same the same idea here. So this means that this formula is roughly proportional to to omega for for small for small values for small values of omega so essentially here in this region yeah so this is a linear linear region here This means that our digital frequencies, if they are low, that the mapping is one to one. Yeah, so the so the T factor here brings brings us back to analog frequencies.